knew that when it came to prophetic giftedness, that he was going to raise up an army, and about 60%, as we could tell, of that prophetic giftedness was going to be Asian. And about 80% of it would be female. So when it came to the prophetic being birthed in Southeast Asia, a majority of it was female. And it was actually Asian, it's not any other kind of race that was in there. So that, so that's, since that point in time, just accidentally, I mean, almost, I, I ended up being surrounded by Asian people as a prophetic reader. So in GLOW, the majority of our spiritual family are Asian Americans. <laughs> this is great. And women. <laughs> and women. <laughs> and women. They're our most powerful prophetic people who, who guide the movement. And people would say that what we've done in GLOW and in in all the way even to influencing the far reaches of the world, that it's prophetic led. And the, most of that prophetic leading is by Asian women. So um, it's not surprising. And this is how we would say it. I mean, it seems as though as the apostolic and the prophetic are emerging in a brand new way, it seems to be that apostolic is very masculine and the prophetic is very feminine. And I think God has a message in that. And that is that he's retur returning true strength and beauty to his church. <laughs> That's worth an amen. That is an amen. Now, it's, they're not mutually exclusive. But I'm just saying one seems, when it comes to the prophetic, it's a very beautiful thing. And beauty is a very strong position to come from on this planet. And strength is a very beautiful thing. So they're not, you know, they're, they're tied together, almost bound together, and sworn to each other's service like a marriage. And so I, I believe that's happening right now. So, um, how do we say that? How do we say that next thing? One more thing. Yeah. You know, that's, that's this, right? Yes. Was there one more? No, the yeah. thing you mentioned about death, that if, if the male dies, the Yeah, male this dies, married for life. Ooh. Did you say, so he said, yeah, if the male dies? The whole family yeah. dies. If yeah. the male will be able to bring that any soul for that family. Mm -hmm. Is that connected? No, I'm, I would be thinking that because this is all happening. This is just for us. I mean, this is for right now. Yeah. This is a marching order. It's almost like a, once we've established that beachhead, this is our next how we begin that war. But I would think that if the true spirit of God, which is upon humanity right now, or such a time as this, or such a time to come, if we lose that, when this movement dies, we're done. If, if this time around, we've got to get it right, Jesus Christ as the head, Jesus, God as the one being in charge, and if we lose that at this juncture, then it all dies. We have to get it right this time. We, we can't allow ourselves. Through God's grace and His mercy, we I've done work completely devoid of the Holy Spirit in the name of Christianity. I have. I knew it when I was doing it. You're like, oh, come on, man. Because you know, I had all the talent. I had all the, everything that I could do. I was, I was a talented preacher. I could, I could sing. I, could, I was very relational. I could do it all, but I could do it without God. And I did for just a small period of time. But I won't do it anymore because it was like playing cymbals and sounding brass. When it all fell apart, it just fell apart. There was nothing left of the kingdom. There was, there was, there was a lady who said that she was surprised that she was teaching people how to throw cannonballs yes. instead of um, you know, the normal teaching. Yes, and that was the, we, that was the new war. The war that, we're, that We have to understand it, even though we've, we've been in a Christianity that has been so passive because we think that the point of Christianity is so that you all can lead a long, dull, and uninteresting life. Yes. And it's not the point. That's right. And we can't do that any longer because there actually is a war that's, that, that is being waged right now against us. Exactly. And so we got to meet that. So, so we have to do whatever body of teaching that emerges. Well, let's, let's write that down. That's a good point. Instead of just saying new war, let's say a body of teaching. body of teaching that comes out of that. We can't, we can no longer say our, our body of teaching is meant to be a passive so that you can lead a good life. It's actually meant to take back territory from the enemy. So, and this doesn't need to be exhaustive. And this might not even, in some cases, be right. We're just doing it off the cuff. 
Okay, but is there something else up here, or are we done for right now? Yes. I just wanted to add, because when we first got to read about this horn bill, it was extinct in Singapore for a season of time. Mm -hmm. And it only came back like in the 40s? 2008. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It well, only came back recently as a pair. And, and then now we have a breeding program. And we, when you mentioned about Southeast Asia, a lot of mm -hmm. countries and states in Southeast Asia uses a horn bill as an emblem of their, of their state or country. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, but I forgot to write down what you said. But that's what was I was missing. If we, if God is, maybe I'll read that story of the Hornbill. No, I'm just trying to think of how to translate. He said they said that the male dies. The male dies. Then yeah, the male dies. dies. So how do we say that in terms of God? We die together. What? We live or we die together. Yeah. The movement dies. If we lose what? If, if God's not the head yes, right. of the then, movement, then, then yes. the whole body. Yes. If God's not the father, the yeah. there's the, if God's not the father of the movement, Bam, thank yeah. you. it's not about the head. Yeah, just the head. God's about the father. And you need to write down the apostolic and the prophetic as well, which is what you were talking about, and then you lost track of what you were trying to say. Yes. Yeah. But I didn't want to get. I'm sorry. I lost, I lost that because you know, in my prophetic mind, sometimes it'll, it'll leave me pretty fast. I knew there was something there, but I completely forgot about. It. So can we can we define what exactly that is? What what exactly is this? What what is the it there? If, if, God, is, yeah, if God is not weak, uh, it is not the uh, mission of church or, or, or organic party movement. I, I think it's about the community that expresses his family. It's his extinguished. And then the, and then the, the darkness. Yes, and, 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 and these things can be, and I just want to, uh, this is just the beginning, but you're the ones who are going to need to kind of expand these and, and unpack these and determine what that is. I think you're accurate on that. Well, I, we don't, I, don't, I don't know if we can write it all down today. I think it would be too much. But we're going to take each one of these and then say, OK, do we, how do we unpack this? And how do we? It, this is almost like an, in a prophetic mind, you're going, this is, becomes an, an assurance for us. If we follow this, I mean, you can feel it in your spirit. Remember what I said in the beginning of this? Let's be led by the Spirit. Don't let your, your knowledge of good and evil and, your, and what you think about her, what you feel about her, and what you're going to do about it, don't let that be the first thing that is its first kind of dwelling place. Let God speak to us. And as God's speaking to me, I'm going, man, this, I think this is more accurate than we know. Without the Father, we Jason wants to say something. Yes. the hornbill was thought to be extinct in Singapore for about 200 years and it's only recently made a comeback when uh, National Parks had a breeding program they released a pair into the wild in Bukit Timah uh, and at first they were afraid because the female laid four eggs and they were afraid that the female would eat the eggs because hornbill females are known to be cannibalistic uh, and eat their young uh, but she didn't. And then they released the male to get food and then he came back. Uh, so it worked. And the eggs, two of the eggs hatched. Uh, and then interestingly, a python, so this was a specific pair, and then a python came and tried to get the eggs and the female fought off the python. And it's documented. And so everything is on film because they put cameras to observe this pair of hornbills. Uh, creating like a whole new thing, uh, re bringing back the hornbill to Singapore. And they actually now have a 40 minute documentary at the Singapore Botanic Gardens. And the title of the documentary is Return of the King. <laughs>
the horn build is uh, one of its traditional names is King of the Jungle or something. It's written on the NPARKS website. They have a whole website dedicated to the horn build and tracing the, uh, the back history and the return of the horn build to Singapore. You can just search that out, Horn Bill Singapore. And Actually, it's the first and yesterday we destroyed the ring. So. Yes. So it was just. <laughs> yeah, that's about 40. <laughs> so it's just. I think this is as far as we need to go with this right now. Mm -hmm. so let's bring up Neil and we'll go into yep. this reason why. And I think we're going to see them merge together. Yeah, pretty cool. Alright, go ahead. No, but <laughs> <laughs>